Because he has risen, he is risen, we can rise above our circumstances. We can rise above our past. There is only one way. You can rise above your condemnation, shame, and guilt, um, all those different things. So many of us know how to go to a better place. We, as I said earlier, you just don't know how to stay there. You need the power of God. The third step says, made a decision to turn your li- will and your life over to the care of God as you understand him. It just how limited your understanding may be tonight, that's enough to get started. And if you stay in these rooms, you're going to get a deeper level of understanding. I mean, it's great to be understood. I, I, I'm a big advocate of therapy and all those different things of that nature. But, but I had a therapist that helped me gain understanding, not just focus on being understood. Because at the end of the day, not many, if anybody, can really understand me. I'm nuts. I'm crazy. I'm still crazy. But I'm crazy good. I've learned how to do good, and so Lord, I just thank you for another day above ground and out of prison. I thank you that I live a life today that I can open my windows and appreciate the breeze that comes through the screen. Lord, I thank you for for the grass that will be green soon. Lord, I thank you for breath in my lungs and sight in my eyes, and and I'm able to hear. Lord, I ask that you think through the mind that you gave me. You speak through the vocal cords that you gave me, that we can hear a message of hope and learn how to ascend. There are no limits with you. So have your way here this evening. Change the hearts and the minds of your people, the ones that should be dead. In your name we pray, amen. Let's give God a hand. So the title of tonight's message is Rising from the Ashes of uh, Addiction. How do you rise from your past? How do you rise out of the pit that you lived in? How do you rise? How do you elevate? How do you ascend? All those different things. Um, we, we know how to get things back. We just don't know how to keep them. Um, and, 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 and we're good rebuilders. We're just not very good builders. I mean, we can rebuild things. I mean, we, we know how to get things back. We don't ever know how to really elevate or ascend from the things that we have. And, and, and we, we don't really understand that with God, there's no limits. And if you have a heart of God and a heart for God and for a heart for God's people, if God can get it through you, God will continue to get it to you. But the key is you have to know how to ascend. You need to know how to elevate. It's not manufactured. It isn't fraudulent. It isn't natural. It's all spiritual. All of us know how to ascend and elevate naturally. Ascending is about spiritual. Spiritual things. How do you ascend spiritually? Recovery is not an outside job to get everything back. Recovery is an inside job. I got to change the way I think through the power of God. I, gotta, I can feel any way I want, but I can't live by how I feel. And then I need to process my feelings, and I need to tell somebody about my feelings, but I can't live. It doesn't say in the 12th step, practice your feelings in all your affairs. You can feel however you want, but it's your feelings that get us in trouble. And at the end of the day, you've got to learn how to process your feelings, and you've got to live by principle. So, so given the fact that it was just Easter Sunday, um, I taught out of this scripture, and I do believe the Holy Spirit's going to do something totally different tonight within the realm of the recovery mindset. At the end of the day, all of us are recovering from somebody, something, someone, addiction, drugs, sex, whatever it is, um, gambling, whatever it is, you're you're recovering from an old relationship, from a childhood memory, whatever happened to you or what didn't happen to you. Um, Everybody's struggling. Everybody's struggling. The struggle isn't going to end. So when struggle comes, I choose not to go with it. For my mental health issues, I choose to take medication. I mean, don't be ashamed of your mental health stuff. I mean, I, I mean, if I, if I get a, a, a terminal illness, I, I'm going to take the medication they gave me, and I'm going to ask for prayer too. Because at the end of the day, God created a man or a woman to create a medication for me to take. And at the end of the day, it was their vision that was to help me, just like no different than vitamins. I mean, I'll take vitamins if I have to take vitamins, and different things of that nature. So I do take vitamins, because just like I said to Dewey, um, I'll never forget a guy that's still stuck in addiction. One day, you know, he, he saw me how I was, and I'm still not good about it to this day, about wearing a seatbelt. Because life is worth living. I don't care. I don't want to die. But there was a time that I, I wanted to die. So I, I, I tried to kill myself, and I, I tried to kill myself through my addiction. So, so Jesus now has, has been crucified. Jesus has been buried in, in, in the tomb, and Mary is going to see him. And, and this is really talking about the importance of ascending. So, so I really want to incorporate it to the mindset of where you were and where God has called you to be. Some people want you to be who you used to be without the drugs. See, you got to change one thing, that's everything. 
So it's not just about quitting dope or quitting drinking or quitting gambling or quitting whatever your sexual stuff is. Um, um, it, it's about changing one thing. That's everything. But Mary was, was going to see Jesus who was in the tomb. So she approaches Jesus in the tomb and Jesus is no longer in the tomb. Um, sometimes people will go looking for you in places where you used to be. Not just physically. They'll, 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 they're so accustomed to your self-pity that they won't know how to recognize a person that's confident. They're so, they're so accustomed to seeing you as a victim and when you get the love of God and the word of, word of God, which is living and active in your soul, and you get a little bounce in your step with humility, they, they don't want to know how to handle you. So here's Mary, and, and she's going to see Jesus, and she doesn't find Jesus. Jesus is gone. Jesus is no longer where he used to be. Now, wherever you used to be, people probably at the end of your run didn't want you there anymore. But at the end of the day, when you ascend and you go to the next level, you see, all of us know how to ascend. If you're sober tonight, you ascended out of addiction. You've experienced spiritual ascending. You've elevated out of the muck and mire of the pain of, of, of a, a, a living addict. And, and now Mary goes to see Jesus, and she comes to find that there's two angels there. There's an angel dressed in a white robe that represents purity. That, that is one angel is sitting where his head was. And one angel is sitting where his feet were. I'm here to tell you, wherever you came from, there's still angels there that protected you while you were there. And there's angels trying to protect the people that are still there. Let's give God a hand. So she's not so much caring about the angels. Because you have to understand, when Jesus was born, there was angels. When Jesus died, there was angels. So, so the angels say to, this, to Mary, dear woman, why are you crying? Um, sometimes people will cry about, they want you to be who you were. They're not going to like this new ascended version of you. They said, why are you crying, the angels asked her, because you have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where you have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there, and the person standing there was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. Jesus was ascending. Jesus was ascending into heaven. Um, so, so when you ascend, when you go to the next level, when you change your brand, when you, when you talk a little differently, when you dress a little differently, just like Dewey said, that was quite an adjustment for us. We were two thugs when we started this journey. But now he's wearing a tie. He ascended. Now, I'm not coming against anybody dressed. I'm, I like dressing like a thug once in a while, too. But at the end of the day, no one's really going to take me serious unless they're thugs. I'm not going in dressing like a thug trying to borrow a million dollars at the bank tomorrow. It ain't going to happen. So Jesus is ascending and, 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 and all that being said, um, Mary doesn't recognize them. And you have to understand when you get and get serious about this, you will begin to spiritually ascend and elevate in life in every area, naturally and spiritually. People aren't going to recognize you. This, this, this program, as Dewey has said, for 15 years is always ascending. So if you miss a couple Sundays, it's going to change by the next time you come back. We're always ascending. We're always changing, not just in the, in the, the building itself on what we're doing and who we're helping and, and all the different things that, we're, that God is starting in and through us. You know, we're not who we were six years ago. We're not who we were six months ago because with God, we're always ascending. So I don't want to miss out on an ascending. I want to be exactly where God wants me to be. But Jesus isn't there. And Mary wanted him to be where he used to be because Mary missed him. Some people will miss the old you. Some people will celebrate the new you. But at the end of the day, the only ones that miss you, the old you, are the people that can't really respect the new you. And they'd rather have somebody full of self-loathing around them because of their own self-loathing. When a spiritual person comes in a room full of demons, the demons shudder. That's right. I mean, I've been to dinner, I and mean, I say this with all humility, I have the Holy Spirit in me. But when I'm around demonic forces, you watch a person, they get real edgy. Yep. And they're not even smoking meth. Yep. <laughs> but they look like they are. Because it's not about the meth, it's about the demonic influence. And at the end of the day, here's Jesus, and he's dressed as a gardener. 
So, so she doesn't really recognize Jesus, and he's, he appears to be a gardener. So, so just like the gardener Jesus that steps four through seven, he's gardening your defects of character. He's pulling out the weeds of your shortcomings. He's pulling out the weeds of your fears and your resentments. So, so we, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is a gardener because if the weeds aren't pulled through steps four through seven, I can't grow. I can't grow. So now she says, sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you put him and I will go get him. And now she says, now Jesus says, Mary, see, see, Mary didn't recognize Jesus as he appeared as a gardener, but she recognized the voice of Jesus. The Bible says that my sheep will know my voice. One of my high school buddies that got thrown in an ambulance on Saturday, his wife was out of town. He, he, I called him finally on Saturday night. He said, I just want to hear your voice. Still drunk. Still haven't seen him since. There's certain people's voices that will calm you. There's certain people's voices. I mean, some of us didn't have those voices in parents. But the ones who of us who did have parents, it's their voice calm me after I had a nightmare. They're, they're the, my, my, my pastor's voice calms me when I'm having a, a chaotic day. So Mary recognized his voice. So, so now she, she says, Mary, she turned to him and says, oh, now I know who you are. And now it says in verse 17, this is what I really want you to get. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I have not ascended yet to the Father. So Jesus, the King James Version says, touch me not. See, if you want to go to the next level, if you want to, if you want to do better... This year, you can't have certain things touching you like they once did. Physical things, emotional things, mental things. You can't let certain feelings attach themselves to you. Because if the wrong feeling attaches itself to you, you're not going nowhere. Quite frankly, that feeling that just attaches itself to you and that new mind, that whacked out mindset, it will not only just keep you where you're at, it will push you down to descend. And Jesus is saying this, Mary, of all people, don't touch me. I'm ascending, and I haven't ascended yet to the Father, he says. He says, go find my brothers and sisters, and, and I am sending to my Father, and your Father, to my God, Jesus' Father, God, um, and, and he says, and your God. So Jesus is reminding Mary, this is your God too. I'm the Son of God. I'm ascending to my Father. So you have to understand, when people don't recognize the new version of you, when you say, I can't be around this anymore, I can't, I can't be around this negativity, I can't be around that, you're going to do this, I'm out. I can't live like this anymore. I can't be a fiend without the dope. I can't operate in my isms without the alcohol. I, I, I want it all gone. And Jesus is saying, don't touch me. So I can't let certain things, if I'm going to the next level in life, touch me, my feelings, my thoughts, all those things. I, I don't cling to me. And the word of God gives us all the preventative maintenance for all those things. But, but this, this was so profound to me because Jesus says, it's your God too. I'm going to the Father God. I'm the Son of God. I'm going there. And, and here's the thing. People won't understand the benefit of you ascending. Because all people care about is themselves. And if you just let that brother or sister ascend to the next spiritual and natural, I'm going to take care of you up here. But if you're clinging to me down here, I got nothing for you. So I'm reminding you, I'm doing this not just for the kingdom benefit. I'm doing this for your benefit, too. So don't touch me. Don't cling to me. I'm going to the next level. And that's hard because people don't understand. Because a lot of us are people pleasers. And if they don't let you ascend, they're not your people. If they get offended because they want to cling to you and you say, don't touch me, not in a rude, manneristic way like you're so arrogant, to say, hey, I ain't got time for this no more. This is my new objective. I got a new assignment. I'm ascending. Now, don't say you're ascending because you'll sound all arrogant. (laughs) But at the end of the day, I want you to understand the power of ascending. So so we have to identify um, what clings to you. What's trying to cling to you now that the dope's gone, now that the alcohol is gone? What's trying to cling to you is your feelings. What's trying to cling to all of us is this jacked up thinking we got. And just like Dewey said, um, stay grateful, stay grateful. And, and, and I look at these, these things. I mean, look at these balloons. I mean, I think they're moving around because of the air flowing here. But these things are always moving around in your life. 
And each and every one of these things is keeping you from ascending. Now that the dope's gone, you're still in the same place. You still think the same, you still feel the same. That's, I'm not, I can't say the word, that's not good. <laughs> Because if you stay here feeling like that and thinking like that, you're going to eventually have to drink. And these things are keeping you from ascending. So the first scripture, when we talk about ascending, is this, fear and anxiety. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. You, again, the voices, you've you got to understand that, that this isn't of God, but, but you have to understand fear too. It says the spirit of fear. Fear itself is not bad. I'm afraid to get high. I'm afraid to run across Douglas Drive when traffic's coming. That's fear. Now, you need fear. When you're little, don't touch the hot stove. I'm afraid to touch this. Now, some of us didn't listen in our world. <laughs> Me too, but, but fear is not all bad. It's the spirit of fear. It's like any time you try to do something good for yourself and for others, the other shoe's going to drop. It's a spirit. And then God says that I gave you love um, power and a sound mind. So, so what happens here is, is every time I try to do a four step and a fifth step, I push fear down through the fifth step. But as soon as I start to do good again, fear rises up. So how do I conquer my fear? So see, fear is always elevated, ascended over my life. So at the end of the day, I can't go any farther because fear is ascended over me. Anxiety, do not be anxious about anything but in everything for prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. Present your request to God and the peace that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. But every time I try to do good, the reason why a guy like me had to go through 11 treatments, I didn't tell you I had fear because I was so tough. Just like I see in the penitentiaries and the jail, it's so tough. And what happens is that, that this fear is always ascending over me. The next one on your sheets out of the book of Ephesians, it talks about anger. Either we got passive anger or aggressive anger. And the Bible says, um, in your anger, do not sin. Let me just tell you about real Christians. They get angry. I get angry. I just don't sin over it. And if I do, I repent quickly. I'm angry about that behavior you did there and what you said, but I'm not going to sin over what you did. It says, in your anger, see, see you have to understand, the, the, the Christians, I mean, the Christians and the, the Jesus followers in this room, you don't want to mess with them. <laughs> You don't want to mess with them because they, they're not just where you used to be. They got street in them too. But they got God in them. And God is more powerful than the street. The Holy Ghost can take care of anything. So, so a lot of, uh, I just um, was listening to Jake's, uh, uh, Bishop Jake's, who I'm going to spend, get to hear from firsthand this week. I, 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 I'm excited because he was talking about that brother that had the get over spirit on him. When, when I think it was Peter and John went and they said, silver and gold I do not have, but rise and walk in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, that brother had a get over spirit on him. Yeah. There's too many people in this room that got a get over spirit on him, a poverty level thinking spirit. Wow. I'm going to get over on that Christian because he has to love me. Well, I'm angry and I'm not going to sin over it. I'm just going to pray about it. And you don't even want me to pray about it. <laughs> see, Christians are strong. Jesus' followers are strong. They got angels with them. They, they, they got these. So it says, in your anger, do not sin. See, too many of us get tripped up of our anger and it descends us. The anger takes us out of promotions. The anger, and it says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down where you're still angry. You're still angry from 15 years ago? You're still angry? But yet we expect no one to be angry with us. But what we did last week. And we look at this anger and this offense. I was never offended in the bar or the dope house. Get the heck out of here, you owe me money. Shots fired as I'm running out the door. Oh, I wasn't offended. I just went to a different dope dealer. But I want you to recognize how you get tripped up on anger. You try to go around and everywhere you go, this anger is. I mean, you got anger everywhere you go. Oh, can I get a job? Oh, no, no I love you. I'm so grateful for this hourly pay. And then anger pops up and you're limited. It says, do not give the devil a foothold. Your anger is a gift that you give the devil. Why would you give the devil something? I don't want to give the devil. I gave the devil 20 years of my life and my children and everything else. I don't want to give him anything. A foothold turns into a stronghold. Now this next one 
is powerful. Unforgiveness. So we won't, we won't do an eighth and ninth step. You know, I'm not going to forgive you because you did this to me. You have to understand, forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person and it has everything to do with you. Why would you let somebody incarcerate you that you're still angry with, keeping you from ascending because you won't forgive them? Your unforgiveness costs too much. You can't afford it. Unforgiveness costs a lot. And here's the thing. Your unforgiveness is your God. Because you can't go any higher than this. You try to pretend like it never happened, and then out of the blue at lunch today, boom, it pops back up. And it's floating around in your head, just like this balloon's floating around right now. And wherever you go, you got this memory, and this memory is keeping you from elevating and ascending, and you can't go any farther than probably a centimeter. This is all the farther you can go in life. And you're, you got a string, here's you, here's you. And here's a person you won't forgive, and you're still tied to them. Why would you want to be tied to someone you don't forgive? You you don't hate that person. Why are you allowing yourself to be tied to something you won't forgive? But that's how it works. The next one is this. Bad relationships. Some of us are addicted. I'm not just talking about a romantic relationship. I'm talking about, man, just like don't do he said, we were homies. I don't want to be a homie no more. My homies really didn't have my back. And at the end of the day, um, these bad relationships on your sheet says, do not be misled. This is how I operate. When I meet somebody, I want to know who your leader is. Who are you following? If you're just following yourself, you're going down. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So, so, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I I mean, I I don't, every second counts for my life. I'm so busy. I don't have time. I mean, at the end of the day, what I had to learn was I can't be around this. I cannot be around this mindset. I can't be around this behavior. Um, This is not good. I love you, but I love you enough to say goodbye to you. You can still come to church, but we ain't chilling together because you're guilty by associations. If you robbed the bank and you were just in the car, you're still going to jail. And at the end of the day, do not, I mean, so a lot of us, we have talent, but we don't have character. I, I, I love watching people operate in realms, getting all stressed out of their minds and, and different things of that nature. I said it a couple of weeks ago. I mean, so, I mean, you, you got to maximize your moments. You got to know who you're in front of. You, you want to see what a person's level of endurance is. But, but, but get around, get away from the negative people. Get away from the, 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 the gossipers. Get away from the people that look at the glass half empty versus half full. Get around the people that are ascending if you want to ascend. Don't get around the people that are descending because then they make you feel more comfortable because they don't intimidate you. They ain't got nothing for you because they're on the descend. And anybody that's on the descend can't do anything for you anyway. I mean, misery doesn't just love company. Misery demands company. I'm going to demand that you're miserable because I'm miserable. And, And that's really talking about it. So look at all these things float around your life and keep you from going to the next level. You never know what angle they're going to take and stuff of that nature. Temptations and desires. They keep you stuck. They keep you tripped up. You can't handle it. It's too much. It's too much. I don't even want to talk to you. It says when on your sheet, it says each one is tempted when they're dragged away from their own evil desires. Everyone in this room has different desires. And what will happen is someone will hook up with the same hookup with a certain desire. It isn't even about the temptation. When, what do we learn in the rooms? God... Help me remove the desire to get high. If God removes the desire, the temptation means nothing. I'm always going to be tempted to do dope. I'm always going to be thinking about dope. When I, when I pull my money out of my pocket, dope. But he had to remove the desire. I mean, Carissa doesn't care about dope. She's no junkie. So when she looks at a $20 bill, she, her mouth doesn't start watering. Because she doesn't have the desire I do. But what about tempted to be afraid? What about tempted to be self-pity? Tempted to be anxious? Tempted to unforgive? It's not just talking about drugs or sex. But when God deals with it at a desire level, you know, at the end of the day, you can't be dragged away if he he changes your desires. God says, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. So we talk about that. Laziness and lack. Are you kidding me? I don't even know if you're a dope fiend if you're lazy. You weren't lazy in your addiction. 
And the Bible says this now, for those who don't plant in springtime will not have anything to harvest more or less in the fall. I mean, you'll never ascend to the next level if your mentality is, I'll wait for tomorrow to do it. Do whatever you can do today, which will leave room for God to bring something new tomorrow. But if you wait for tomorrow to do something you could have done today, God can't bring you to what he wanted to give you tomorrow because you didn't do what you were supposed to do today. You cannot, I, I mean, I, I deal with these guys. I mean, if you just spend another 10 minutes on this project, you don't even have to come back tomorrow. I'm tired. No, use your head, genius. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? You're already in hell. Stay here a little longer and let's get the job done so you don't have to return to hell in the morning. That's right. That's right. Get around somebody that can coach you with the right mentality. I mean, I, I mean, I, I got guys, I mean, you, you see what I do on um, whatever Sunday nights, give away 50 bucks to... 10, 50, I mean, probably 10, 15 people this last week. I mean, that should be a jump start for you. I mean, you can't come and say you want to get sober when you show up here high every day. I mean, I gave 50 bucks and, and screw me once, shame, shame on you. Screw me twice, shame on me. And that happened to me this week. Because this guy told me he's going to go into treatment. He's still not in treatment. You can get into treatment if you wanted to get into treatment. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. You just want to get high. Don't, don't give me that she left me or he left me and my life's falling. You can get into treatment. My tax dollars pay for your treatment. Laziness and lack. Pride and self-sufficiency. On the sheet it says pride goes before destruction. Thinking you got this when you just missed it. You know, pride is thinking you don't need to work a program. A haughty spirit before the fall. I mean, I was just, I, I referenced this recently, but I was just down supporting my spiritual father, my pastor, my bishop. He used to teach a teen challenge. I went down under to see him speak on Thursday. I saw about 75% of the men that have nothing to their name. And I asked God, is this pride? And, and, and I think to myself, they're, they're sizing up me, they're sizing up Bishop Earl, the people that have ascended, because God says everyone can. And they won't even hear from us because they're full of envy. Because they're lazy. They're not willing to do the work that he did to get to what he has. And this pride isn't even pride. God says, no, it's fear. They're afraid of responsibility. They're afraid of accountability. They don't like structure. I'm sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And at the end of the day, we have to understand that. But how can you sit there with a chip on your shoulder with $10 to your name? I mean, that's just foolish. That's foolish. And now it says regrets and shame. So, so, so the, the nine, Luke 9.62 says on your sheets, no one who puts their hand on the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom. See, if you got all this stuff weighing you down, you ain't fit. You got too much weight on you. You can't roll with the people rolling here. You got to get this stuff up on you. Say, don't cling to me. Touch me not. So all these things do what they do. So, so I mean, to really identify what they are. But now, where are you at with this stuff? Where, do you, where are you at with your fear? Where are you at with your anxiety? Where are you at with your unforgiveness? Where are you at with your anger? Where are you at with your laziness and all that? And then it says, it's so profound where it says, well, where, are you, where are you at? Luke 14 says this. For which of you is intending to build a tower? You're intending to build a new life. And it goes on to say, does not sit down and first count the cost. We didn't count the cost when we picked up our drugs and alcohol for the first time. So we don't know how to count the cost in our recovery. If the cross costs Jesus everything, your recovery is going to, and your freedom and your ascending is going to cost you everything. Recovery doesn't go on sale. Recovery costs what it costs. I know some of us go to the thrift store and we roll around with what we think is a $200 outfit that costs $15.50. But at the end of the day, recovery costs what it costs. Unforgiveness costs too much. You can't afford to not have forgiveness in you, even over your own life. So, so, so we understand what it says here, and, and now what I like what it says in John 15 too, what do you need to cut out or cut back from in your life? What do you need to cut out? Who do you need to leave? 
Who can't you be around anymore? Not just a person, but a thought. Not just a thought, but a feeling. If you always think what you've always thought, and you always feel what you've always felt, and you always do what you've always done, you're not going to ascend. It's not going to happen. So what do you need to cut out of your life? What mindset, what feeling, with God's help, do you need to do that? And then what it says here is so profound, while every branch that does bear fruit, there are things that are working. God is now teaching us to prune it, cut it back. Don't just cut it. Don't cut it out. Cut it. It was hard for me to do that about eight years ago when I put Doug in charge. Because I, I felt like I was failing because I, I couldn't be with all of you. I, when I changed my number two years ago and shook 2,000 people and everybody was mad at me, I had to cut back in order to grow more. Yep. Yep. My clients, as we got 300 employees, I had to cut back my exposure to them, hire somebody to talk to them, cut back, didn't make them all happy, but we grew more. Yep. See, you have to understand these principles. Now, now I'm meeting with people, and this is my heart, so for those of you who have met, they schedule these half-hour meetings with me. It breaks my heart because I feel like I'm failing the person. They only got a half hour. I had to cut back. It ain't about me. It's about preserving me so we can grow this bad boy. That's what it's about. You're going to hurt somebody's feelings. And at the end of the day, that's what God is asking us to do. So, so God is saying this, and if we understand the power of the resurrection, and we understand when the Amorites came against the Israelites and they killed five kings in, in one war, see what happens is this. God, through the 12 steps, he can grab everything at once. When you work steps four through seven, and he can deal with your shortcomings. He, this, I mean, this is a manifestation of all your shortcomings and character defects and your, your fears and resentments. See, God wants to bundle them all up for you tonight, and he wants to teach you how to ascend. And God gave me this visual because at the end of the day, um, this, this, is, this is what it is. Jesus rose again. Say, rise again. Rise again. Jesus took this stuff up with him. See, you got to cut it. You got to cut it out of your life. You got to do the cutting. And Jesus does this and he cuts it. But here's what happens when he cuts it. It all falls to the ground. I can't say S-H-I-T. Check this out. Check this out. I can't say S-H-I-T. But S-H-I-T is the greatest fertilizer there is. So all your shortcomings... All your character defects, all your fears and resentments, they go to the ground and Jesus takes the manifestation of what you're feeling. This now fertilizes the ground that you walk on. So I can relate to you, even though he took my anger, I can relate to somebody that's angry. Because he took the dung and put it in the ground and I started to grow and ascend. So it says this, check this out. I mean, you have to cling to the right people to ascend. You can't be clinging to somebody that's on the descend. It says, they all rushed to Solomon's hall, and while they were holding tightly, clinging to Peter and John. Stay close to those who are on the the ascending, that have done it for years. Every time you turn around, something new's happening. Every time you turn around, you see impact and love and generosity. Those are the people that are ascending. Cling to them. Everyone stood in awe. I'm in awe of what God has done here. I'm in awe. You don't know how this started. It was pain, and it's still pain. We're in awe, but don't, don't, don't be envious of somebody else's ascending. Be in awe of it. Like, God doesn't play favorites. You can be part of it, too. And what it says here, the wonderful thing that has happened. I can't even quantify the wonderful things that have happened in 15 years. In every area of my life. So it says in Matthew 11 now, watch and learn how these people always ascend. They always ascend. I know what it's like checking back into a sober house that I was in three years ago, and the place totally changed, and I'm still in the worst position that I've ever been. That's painful. But instead of being sitting in my low self-worth, I said, well, what are you doing that's working? Yeah. How have you ascended? I mean, how, how have you gone from one house to how many you got now? How does that work? How did you start with 25 people in a congregation with nothing and look at everything that you got? Yeah. Austin, where are you at? Where's he at? He says to me on Sunday, man, I'm proud of you. I mean, don't be proud of me, be proud of God. Look at what God has done. Let's give Austin a hand. Yeah. 
So it says in Matthew 11, are you tired? Worn out, burned out on religion? You never get burned out serving God. You get burnt up by the devil. Because you're serving God for the wrong reasons, to get noticed, to get a pat on the back, to a good job and all. Don't worry about accolades from people. Just concern yourself with the man upstairs says, well done, my good and faithful servant. When you, when, when you hear, they taught me this. They, they brought me up to varsity hockey when I was still in junior high. The coach said this, hey, um, you, in Bantams, you're no longer there. You're playing on the varsity. He said this, don't expect a pat on the back every time you get off the ice. Your performance is expected. That's how big boys think. But I was a little boy in a big boy position. And it hurt when I didn't get that pat on the back. 100%. If you're you're waiting for somebody to notice, you'll never get noticed. But if you don't want to get noticed, all people will do is notice you. But you have to understand they're not going to drop the palm branches for you. It's about the God in you. Don't ever make it about you. It's about the God in you. So here's the question. For the people that are ascending, they say, hey, hang with us. Get away with us. This is Jesus talking. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. With God, you don't have to force anything. You don't have to force your agenda. You don't have to manipulate an outcome. With God, if you wait on it, you stay in position, he'll bring you the provision. I had a good friend of mine today get all tripped up, and at least he told me he was jacked up and tripped up and offended about something that happened. I said, you ain't got time to be offended? We ain't got time to be offended over this? If I would have more meetings in my office on how we're going to build the kingdom versus somebody's self-pity, we could really do something. Let that stay where it stays, and let that fertilize the ground that it stands on. That's fertilizer. It says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting. Oh, oh, oh. Monday at 5 o'clock, you want me to make sandwiches for an hour? When you sat and waited for the dope man that you owed money to for three hours at 20 below zero. It don't make no sense. So anything anyone who is ascending is asking you to do is to benefit you and the kingdom. And if it benefits the kingdom, it's going to benefit you. And that's what God is saying to us here. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely. So I'm going to close with this, John 5. Life will get worse unless you learn how to ascend. They teach us, they say, you pick up where, where you left out. Later Jesus found them in the temple. Jesus found you at church tonight. Did you ever think you would be in a church? Besides stealing the offering plate of the church? It says, later Jesus found them at the temple and said to them, I see that you are well again. We see that you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. You pick up where you left off and worse. I'll close with this. Worse, worse, extremely worse is waiting for you. It will be worse than you could ever imagine if you go back. Worse is waiting for you. It's time for you to ascend. God bless you.